Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So today's a very deep session, a very big session, and it's all about what your magnetic mind is, but also understanding uh, your unconscious or self-conscious or dark side or shadow agenda. I want you to, to really get this today, is that there's two ways to live. There's a, uh, a conscious creator way to live, and then there's, there's actually, uh, there, there's around what's going on behind the scenes and today i'm going to call this our unconscious agenda at times i've referred to it as the egoic agenda um your identity agenda today it felt right to call it the unconscious agenda and it'll, it'll make sense as as we go through it so just for clarity we have our uh, our current reality here we have the desired reality that we're wanting to create and then we have a different agenda where we're trying to do something else now for me, this is something that I've seen time and time and time again. And those of you who have read my book have heard about this many times. The first time that I saw this showing up is I was consciously telling everyone that I wanted freedom. And I was saying I wanted freedom and I wanted to be able to live free and be free. And I made millions of dollars and I, was, I had all the ability to be free. But for some reason, I was still working my butt off and not having any freedom. And it seemed weird. There was like this cognitive dissonance going on behind the scenes. And I know this is true for a lot of people that they, they, they say they're going for one thing. They actually have the ability to have it, but that they're not actually accepting it. They're not actually going for it. Uh, another way this turned out, and, and I've, I've shared this story before, is I really wanted to create a successful business. And I, I thought that the only way that I could, could do this well, not thought, sorry, what would keep showing up is that I had to find a business partner to do it with. For, for years, I would, I would, instead of just going for what I want, I would always partner up with someone and, uh, and then I would work together with them and then we would create success, but it would always dissolve and I'd always be left with it was their, their fault. And, you know, this happened again and again and again. And then in 2016, you know, my, my best friend, uh, Dees, he died. And, and then it was like, well, he died and that had the business fall apart. What was really interesting is uh, in that next year, I had uh, three other business partners come and go and we created success, millions of dollars uh, in one, uh, over 600,000 in another and in another big business, bang, bang, bang. And they all fell. And every time I was like, oh man, it was, you know, it didn't work out with that person. And that was my first realization. What I realized was that I had an unconscious structure that instead of going for what I want is that I would go for what I want, but I would always get someone else and enroll them in my vision in a way that they actually couldn't succeed. It was really interesting to re like when I reverse engineered and looked at it, every person I've got into partnership with, it wasn't true. They, they weren't able to do what I needed. And because of that, there would always be this conflict and then it would always dissolve. It was so fascinating to watch that that pattern actually gone right through my sporting career all the way back. And I could trace it right back to how I was with my father. And he was basically my, my partner in, in, in creating my sporting success. And I saw it again and again and again. Now, uh, it's very interesting to watch these patterns play out. And so you can, you can see, hey, Joanne, you can see your unconscious uh, agendas play out based on your results. So it's so funny, these little things. I've just spent the last, I guess, two weeks witnessing for myself uh, another, another thing. And uh, I want to share with you what I've seen. I'm going to be very vulnerable and, ex and express it because it's happening right now. And, uh, and, I, and I am certain this is going to make a really big impact in you being able to witness some of the unconscious agendas playing out for you. So in 2015, I moved, uh, Harriet and I moved to the United States. 2016, uh, uh, the United States elected a, a president which changed visa rules. And, uh, and so our visas, 
um, no longer were, were working the way that they were supposed to be working. And this was 2016. And so we decided to, you know, we'd stay living in the United States and we would start uh, going in and out of the country uh, about, I think we had to go in and out every six months. And so that, that was fine. We'd moved our dog there, we'd go in and out and we were working on getting the, getting the right visa and all these things, getting it sorted. When my friend died, uh, my, my financial, uh, um, uh, ability, my financial situation changed, changed massively. And so then I could no longer, I was no longer in the position to go for the visa in the way that I wanted to do it. And uh, we had lots of heartbreak. 2016 and 17 was a very difficult time. So if you read in my book, Harriet and I decided, you know what, the, a safe bet is let's go to the United Kingdom. And uh, that's where Harriet's from. She's from England. And we'll go back there and that will all be good. So we go over there, we move over there and we keep doing our business. We keep doing things. And guess what happens? Same thing happens. About a year into it, we're applying for my visa and my visa gets declined. And I'm not from the UK, so my visa gets declined. This is 2017. So, so I'm going, oh, or 2018, actually, early 2018. Maybe, I think so. I think I've got my dates right. Anyway, uh, the visa gets declined. And it gets declined because they're saying, well, we don't know how you're going to support yourself. Uh, you know, you don't have a job. Like, how do you make your money? We're, you know, these sort of things. Okay, so anyway, it, uh, it got declined. So I said, right, you know, this is chaos. Uh, let's go to the one place that we both have visas, which is Australia. And honestly, if you've read the book, you've heard about this part of the story. Now, we, we come to Australia, 2018, and we had uh, a five-year partner visa because I'm from New Zealand to be here. Anyway, so we, we had that. We got here. Harriet had to renew her visa. Now, what happened was she missed the visa, but the visa renewal by four days. And, and it was silly. We knew about it. We even had the date written right on the forms. We just submitted it four days late. So for four days, my wife was an overstayer here in Australia because she, she's from the UK. Now, so this is very interesting. Now, seeing this pattern, same pattern play out. So we obviously, we appealed it. We said, hey, we're really sorry. And we appealed it. And anyway, the appeal took six months, which the appeal went into 2019. The appeal then went into COVID. It got pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and pushed back until last week. And so about three weeks ago, we get a phone call to say, finally, you, you know, you'll be able to go and appeal. So on the, last, the week before last, when I, when I took this session off, I took this session off. I was up in, uh, you know, up in the big city in the big smoke in Brisbane. And uh, we went up there. And, and anyway, we, we, we made our case and we won. So, so Harriet won. And so we got our visa. Yes, finally, me and my family, we're all able to be in the country. Everything's great. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Here's where it gets interesting. Last week, I get a phone call from my, my accountant. Actually, I'll back up a second so you truly get it. I wasn't sure if we were going to win that uh, appeal. Okay, I wasn't sure. So we didn't know. So, so we did the double bubble. We got ourselves super neutral. We said, you know what? If we don't win the appeal, what, what, what will happen? Is And so we had a whole plan and actually... Uh, we had a really cool plan. So those of you in the United States, we said to ourselves, you know what, we're going to go, uh, we'll, we'll, we have to appear, we have to resubmit the visa from outside of the country. So where can we go? Uh, we, we, we've already both had COVID, Harry and I, so uh, we, we don't need the vaccines. We haven't had the vaccines. We've already recovered from COVID, which is a far better, um, you know, far better immunization than, than, than anything else. So we had to look for a place that, you know, would allow unvaccinated people in these sort of things. So we found Mexico. And we're going to go to Tulum in Mexico. And, and here's what we decided, uh, because we actually can't go into the United States because we, we haven't had the vaccine, blah, blah. So anyway, we're going to go to Mexico. And here's what we were going to do, just for everyone in the United States. We had this great plan. We are, we'll go to Mexico. We'll get ourselves a retreat center. Um, we'll rent our houses out here. We'll get a retreat center. We'll start telling our people in the United States, hey, jump on a plane, come spend some time with Harriet and Chris. We'll do a weekend events. It's going to be amazing. Like I had this whole, I was like, it's actually going to be awesome. And we're like, this is going to be freaking incredible. This is going to be amazing. So who cares? This is what we said to ourselves. We said, who cares what the judge says? If they give us the visa, great. If they don't, don't. So, so we're like, that's going to be amazing. We're like, well, since it's an unvaccinated place, people from Europe could fly in, you know, whatever. They, it's going to be awesome. And so we were so happy with it. Hey, And we were like, this is, this is just great. So we go there and we win. And we're like, yes, we won now. So, so I won, but I had this other plan in the back of my head. And so then the next week happens and um, my accountant, talking to my accountant, very, very strange timing. 
So I talked to my accountant and my accountant goes, okay, cool. You've done very well in your business, blah, blah, blah. And he says to me, you know, you're going to have to, you, you know, you, you owe uh, over a million dollars in, in tax. And I was like, wow, that's a, that's a lot of money. And, uh, and then he said, but if you were outside of the country for more than six months in a financial year, because you're not an Australian, you wouldn't actually be a, a, a tax resident of Australia. You're going to save around about $700,000. So you're going to save around $700,000. And all you have to do is be outside the country for six months. So there I am. I'm going, right, well, I've got this whole idea that if I just go there, I'm going to save this huge amount of money. I won't be a tax. I start getting all excited and all these things. So I started enrolling myself and I want you to get, I started enrolling myself. I start telling myself and I start going, great, here's what we'll do. And then I catch it. Then I catch it. If I chose to go get on that plane, I'm buying into the same structure because guess what? I'd be in a new country without a visa. I would be in a place where my wife still has to do a bit more here. So it would be apart for a little while while she got the processes sorted. And I guarantee what would happen. I would end up there and I would find a way for the government or something to decline some visa for me. And I would be in the same situation that has been playing out for six fucking years. Now, do you see how I see the ideas? Do you see that? How does that happen? Because I don't really want to go there. I don't really want to go there. It's not a true choice. What was I really, what am I really trying to do? I told you today's going to be deep. So I realized, and I did a process I'm going to take you through, and I did the process. I pulled it here. And so I said, what do I really want? What do I really, really want? What do I really choose? And it was obvious, I know what I choose. I choose to do what I'm doing. I choose to be able to, to, to be leading this. I choose to be able to be with my wife. I choose to be able to play to I choose to have a great life. But what am I trying to do? So well, what I'm, what I'm, what's, what's really happening is that's what I choose. But these, this action is what I'm taking. And here, you ready for it? The whole action, everything is based on an idea that the world is against me and I have to beat it. And I have to beat it. See, what I realized when I unpacked it is I had this unconscious assumption that the world is always against me. So as soon as we got the visa from Harriet, all of a sudden I code up another way the world is against me. Because think about this for a second. The tax situation has been there for three years. The tax situation has been there for three years. So why, just when I figure out the visa situation, has it become important? That was the smoking gun because everything else makes sense. But can you see that? And you guys know what I mean by smoking gun. That was the evidence I couldn't deny. That situation was always there and I'm more than uh, aware of it. In fact, I even got the money saved. To be honest, the money's already saved. I already knew what I had to pay. There's no, I've got no stress. So I asked myself, what am I actually trying to bloody do? And the answer was, I'm just trying to beat them. I'm not actually trying to have what I want. I'm just trying to win. And, and this, is, this is very fascinating because all of us have unconscious agendas that are playing out behind the scenes that are actually nothing to do with what you're going for. 
See, what I would, what I'm going for is a beautiful life, a beautiful, amazing family, uh, heaven, a, a purpose, sharing amazing things. I want to write another book. I want to, I want to share conscious education. I want to be the CEO of this movement. That's what I choose. I want to be fit. I want to be healthy. I want to ride my Harley Davidson. I, I've got two beautiful houses here. I want to spend time at the beach. I want to be, that's what I choose. What the heck was I doing? about to go go get on this plane and do this thing and do everything in opposite of that. And I promise you, I'd convinced myself. I'd convinced myself, I started enrolling other people. And I know when I start getting enrolling and I start, I'd, I'd rung Scotty and I told him the plan and I talked to Alexi and I started, I, my, maybe some of them are on this call as well, not knowing I was gonna share this. I started enrolling people in my unconscious agenda. Hey, <laughs> my, my wife just typed and I'm going to copy it. She just typed it just to me because she's a complete troll. And she said, I'm enrolled. I'm copying it because you are picking on me. So I'm going to pick on you back, Carrie. My wife decided to come in here. She wrote, I'm enrolled. I'm copying it to all of you. This is so I don't have trolls like my wife on here. <laughs> That's what you get, babe. <laughs> so, so how's this relevant to you? How's this relevant to you? This is relevant because you will have unconscious, self-conscious, shadow agendas, ego, whatever you want to name it. You will have an agenda that has nothing to do with going for what you want. You see, I can have what I want. I've already saved the money for the tax and I can finally have what I want. And as soon as I get the visa, as soon as I can finally have it, my brain codes up how I can't have it, how the world's against me, how blah, 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 how it's not fair and that da, 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 I shouldn't have to pay that much. And But, but who chose to live here in these rules? True. Who chose to have an Australian company? Who chose all of this? I did. You see that? Do you see the game I'm playing? Unconscious. I chose it all. And then as soon as it comes to it that I can actually just have it how I want, I ignore that I made all of these choices and try to go and do something else. Do you see that? You see, this is mastery. When you're able to look at your unconscious patterns and go, look at that. Look at that. That's mastery, hey? And, and so, so I wanted to share this with you. I wanted to share this with you is when you can can have this self-awareness and you can look at it and go look at what that is that has nothing to do with what I really want you'll be able to so we're gonna we're gonna go against it we're gonna go with this because I had this and then this is why I think coaching is so important hey this is why coaching is so important to have and obviously I self-coach myself is to be able to look at yourself and go okay and unpack and go what is the underlying assumption what am I trying to achieve here? Because just pay the bloody money and have what you love. Who cares? You see what I'm saying? You got it all. You know, the only way to have to pay that much is you made a lot more than that. So just enjoy it, have it. But I'm playing this other agenda. Or don't, don't set that structure up. Create a completely different structure. Does that make sense? Like who made the structure? That's the point. Who made the structure in the first place? See that, and why was this not a choice before? So these were the things. So obviously I was in complete reaction, complete reaction. And so, so I went through a process I'm going to take you guys through today about unpacking this, acknowledging what that agenda is. And so I think there's probably about, by the way, who's enjoying today's session? Because I think it's very relevant to, for a lot of you. I think it's very relevant to every creator to acknowledge we have one thing, which is we're going for what we love. And then we have a whole nother thing going on. A whole nother thing. And this whole other thing, if you choose to play in this, it's inevitable what, what pans out. True. It's just bloody inevitable. Can everyone see into, into the future there? Could you see that if, if I went and did that, could you see that I'm playing into an agenda that it, the world's against me? You see that? And could you see that I would just end up not having the right visa probably 
if I went and played that out, probably what's going to happen is my wife's, you know, because we've, we've been, they've said, yes, you can have the visa, but it hasn't come through. We've got a piece of paper saying, you know, your four days have been excused. But probably what would have happened if I'd gone, probably her visa gets delayed, she can't leave, all sorts of all sorts of stuff that I just don't need. You see, for what? For what? And that's what would have happened. Then probably I would have got out, gone over there. Probably Australia wouldn't have let me back in to come back. If you know, see what I'm saying? Do you see all of these things that could have happened? But all I'm thinking is, I'm going to beat them. I'm going to beat them. Not realizing if I let that go, I can just have it now. I can just have it already. And so, so when I, true, is, is a, and, and that's, that's a big thing. And so every time that I've been able to observe how my unconscious has an agenda against my creative power, as soon as I see it, I'm a, I'm then, I then can let it go. As soon as I'm able to recognize it and see it, I just don't engage in it anymore. And so when I, when I decided to stop engaging in the business partner, in fact, if May or Esther in here, they started teasing me back in 2015 and 16 because they kept saying, oh, Chris, you're just getting another business wife. Because I was, I was always getting business relationships with men that always say, you're getting another business wife because every few months I'll have another partner. And they said, and as soon as I acknowledged and realized that that was causing it, and I said, I'm, I'm going to run it, that, that changed. As soon as I, as soon as I realized that I, I didn't actually really, I wasn't really going for freedom, I actually wanted purpose. And I stopped going for that, I could have it, you see. <laughs> Maybe I, team, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to sit there and heckle me just to me. You have to type it to everyone. So I'm, I'm putting May G to everyone as well. And, and, and so now when I see this one, I'm choose, I'm going to not engage in it. Now I'm going to not engage in it. And as soon as I don't engage in it, then that part of me that that aspect of that agenda, it no longer it no longer gets my attention and it falls away. It falls away. And the faster you can catch this, the better. So, so I'm going to, going to talk through this. So, so first, uh, I want to give you a little bit of knowledge about uh, how some of your agendas, how they actually have a goal. So if you want to do a different word, the agenda is also actually a goal that it's aiming for. So the, and this is the, the unconscious or the problem orientation goal, okay? So, so first off, you must understand how we end up here, okay? How, how do we end up here? Well, when, when we come into this world, uh, at, at some point, we have to acknowledge that we're separate from our mother. And I know that sounds a strange thing to say, but to, you know, to begin with, you're connected completely to your mother. And then you know, you, you, you're born and you become an individual, but you don't realize it until you, you realize that you have to do things. You can, you can get validation and uh, you can get praise and you can get love, but also that you can lose it. You can be judged, you can be criticized, you can be ignored. Now, it's very painful to have this realization because uh, you don't want it. Does that make sense? So, so, and Carl Jung used the word individuation, becoming an individual. In this, in this realizing that you, you don't just have it all, you also give it, you, you make up a reason because it's very painful to just go, what, you know, I'm ignored. And so instead of saying I'm ignored, what we, we decide is there something that we can do to avoid it? And, and this, uh, there's something I can do to, to avoid it is, is very, 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 uh, very good. And, and, and what happens is, as a child, it's a good thing. We say, I'll do this to avoid it, but we get, in, we get uh, trapped in it. Okay. So, so the, first, the first way, the first agen agenda that our unconscious has, instead of going for what we love, it's going to be, it's going to try to be the perfect person, the perfect version of you. Does that make sense? It is the perfect version of you. So that's the first way. So they want, there's an ideal. So, so this orientation has a goal to be perfect. You see that? And whatever that is, there's an ideal. However that look is, uh, however that intelligence, there's a perfect way of being. 
and, and that's the agenda. The agenda isn't to just go have what you love, it's to be perfect, okay? The, the second one is instead of going for what they love, is they're actually going to be good. They wanna be seen as good because they believe that being good makes you worthy of having what you want, you see? So you, you know, my finger pointing, right? You, you think you're going for this, but you're actually trying to be good, be seen as good, be, be seen as worthy and, and uh, be told you're good. The idea that if I'm good, then I'm allowed to go for what I want. Does that make sense? That's the unconscious agenda. Instead of going just, I want to be rich, they're going to go over here and try to do lots of good for people because if they've done lots of good, the belief is in I can have it, you see. Instead of just going for the love of their life, they, they just try to be really helpful to that person, you see. And so, so it's very, very big. That's number two. So, so number three is, is my orientation is trying to prove, is trying to prove that you're good enough, to prove that you're better than. The, 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 the sad thing about trying to prove that you're better and you always have to have an enemy. You always have to have someone you're trying to beat, someone you're trying to prove to. There's always someone else that has something that you're trying to one up, you see, and that's the agenda. And mine, the one that I was just exploring then, just got so caught up in trying to prove to the government and really my mother that, that I'm better than and I know better than and I'll beat your stupid system. And that was that's really what, what it is. And so that's the third one, good enough. Uh, the fourth one is the agenda to actually be accepted or loved. To be accepted or loved. Okay, so instead of going for what you want, trying to be accepted, trying to be loved, trying to finally regain love. Like it's been taken from you. So you're not going for what you want, you're going to be accepted or loved. So someone might write these out for you. The first one is perfect or ideal. The second one is to be worthy or to be good. The third is good enough or to prove. The fourth is to, to be loved or accepted. The, the fifth is to understand the world. Instead of going for what you want, this person needs to understand how everything is. And this, this, this person is very recluse, hey? the fifth are very reclusive they're trying to understand the world and and that's because they thought hey the world's super scary i need to figure it out you see i need to figure it out. i'm going to understand how everything works and uh and they get very stalled okay they get very stalled and trying to understand it instead of just instead of just going the sixth way is they're looking for someone to give them permission they always want an authority figure to say, you're allowed. This is what you're allowed to do. They're wanting permission. Okay, they want to be allowed. What am I allowed? What am I allowed to do? And this is an, another agenda that I see is that they're not going for what they want. They're going to try to be allowed. They're trying to find someone who says, yes, you can do this. And if someone's saying, yes, you can do it, they're good. Uh, or, or they're against it, but they're trying to be allowed. Why won't, and they always have a problem. Why won't they allow me to have what I want? Why won't they allow me? It's always something. This, this agenda, it fascinates me. I've got a friend of mine. He always, always, always has something that's not allowing him to have it, you know, not allowing him to have it. In 2008, you know, he couldn't have it the way he want because there was a financial crisis. Then he couldn't have it the way he's what because he's having a breakup. Then he couldn't have, have it what I want because there was uh, he was too busy fighting that there was fluoride in the water. Then the next thing, and then the next thing, and then, you know, always something. And right now, that's so triggered. Instead of going for what he wants, he's so caught up in everything else. It's just completely triggered. The, the, the next is uh, they, they're only, only allowed to feel good feelings. So th this person only allows positive to happen, only allowed to be positive. So instead of going for what they want and maybe having to have a hard truth, you know, let's say what they really want is to, uh, is to tell a person that they love them or say, hey, I want to end a relationship or I want to do this. They'll never do it because their unconscious agenda is to never feel anything bad. Thanks, Lisa. It must only be positive. If they have to do something like fire someone or break up with someone or ask for a sale or any of that, they just won't do it because they're so scared of any negative. 
So their agenda is only feel positive. And they really buy into, you know, some of the ideas of if you feel positive, everything in your life will show up right, which is obviously bullshit. <laughs> but but they but they they feel that. Uh, the next one is uh, instead of going for what they want, is they actually go uh, they go to dominate. They they believe in they they believe that the people that are in charge and in control and dominating, they get what they want. And uh, so instead of instead of just saying, "Hey, I'd actually really like a, a, a happy relationship," or "I'd love this," they actually they actually being dominating. And it's really fascinating. You watch this in parents is um, what they say that they want is you know capable kids, but what they actually do is just dominate and say, "This is all you're allowed to do." You know, so you see it. They're actually going that they must have control. Uh, they must have control. And then the last one is uh, is they go for peace. They all are actually, Dermot. They all are. If you if you've done intuition, you know exactly where these come from. And uh, the last one is they're going for peace or for for no conflict. And so the last one is no conflict or peace. And therefore, they actually never go for any goals because going for anything, um, there has to be some sort of conflict. So, so I wanted to just um, lay these these nine out and uh, and talk about them, which are which are based off the enneagram, and it's it's very important to acknowledge how you're, uh, what you're really going for, you know, and go what am I really going for? The, the truth is, is you could be going for any one of those nine, or something else. But here's the truth. Here's what I really want you to get. Okay, is you're either going for your end result, or you're going for uh, for some other agenda that that may, that isn't your end result. That's it. And knowing what your unconscious agenda is saying and going for allows you to disengage with it. So fill me in team, because I've covered quite a bit. What are you learning from today's session? What's landing? What are you getting? What are you getting? What's important for you from understanding this? Jada says, I feel like I have most of these. I'd say all of us play out these different agendas at different times. Nice, all right. Practice becoming aware. Vanessa, I can see a reoccurring pattern. That's right, Marion, totally. Nice, Tom. Very 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 powerful very powerful uh shannon the the six are a summary of these that i'm talking about today yeah the six sabotaging beliefs yeah so this is very very important and if you've got a if you've got something in your life, you have to always ask yourself, what do I really choose? So let's relate it back to my story. What I really choose is what I have. I choose to have a great life. I choose to you know love my life. I choose to lead this movement. I choose to do all these things. This is what I choose, and I ch and I choose that. And the obvious action is is to be in that choice and to have it. And if in the future it makes sense to to go set up a seminar room in Mexico or whatever and have and if that makes sense well that's a good nice clean choice so the 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 action could look the same in the future but it would be based off a clean choice does that make sense a true choice the challenge with the way that i was structured is can everyone agree it was not true hey if it was true, it would have already been on my list, right? Right? It would have already been there. We must all acknowledge that it's a complete reaction. So it doesn't matter 
uh, how much of a nice idea it is. If I engage in that, am I playing in this or this? If I engage in it, I'm not being creative. I'm being caught in a structure where I'm trying to escape and beat the Australian tax office. True? And I probably won't win. And then it'll become a fight that I'm engaged in versus going for what I love. I already know I can have it, pay the money, have it. Because I chose to open a business here. I chose a structure. I chose it. Make sense? Because who put myself here? That's the fascinating thing. That's the fascinating thing. So I was stuck in a seven year pattern of not of um, visa challenges that I just collapsed by realizing what the true agenda was. The true agenda was I, I wanted to, to fight something. I wanted to fight something. And so that agenda keeps playing out into you acknowledge it, name it, and stop engaging. See, I knew that I wanted this success. I knew what I wanted. I know what I want to create. But unconsciously, that agenda is just sitting there. And that is what was making all the chaos. So here's the big point. Here's the point. You have a magnetic mind already. You already have a magnetic mind. You already are a magnet. However, most of us have a magnet that is run by an unconscious program that we created when we were two years old. See, that unconscious pattern that I was running was trying to prove mom wrong promise you when I pulled it out that's exactly where I'll show you I'll show you I won't have to do it that way and so most of us already have a magnetic mind the key is to be able to turn that magnet into what you want because how how crazy is it to think about all the things that Harriet and I could create and we keep walking in to bloody visa problems. That's a very interesting creation, isn't it? That's like out of all the things that we could keep manifesting, that is powerful. What if I could use that same power and redirect that power into what I want? Well, well first, I have to understand that your magnet, your mind is on three different levels, self-conscious, unconscious, superconscious. Your goal in this program and what we do is to have all three of, of those uh, aspects of mind working together. So you, you can't turn a magnet on and off. Like these, these two pins are a magnet. It's on. It's on. You can't turn it on and off, okay? It's a magnet. All you can do is focus its power in the right way. You see? Now, what's interesting, there's a few people in the chat box that, that, that are wanting to, to, to try to, you know, join my story, hey? Say, hey, yeah, well, you know, tax is bad and blah, blah, blah. It's just a story to help you understand something, you see? And it's, and it's not about you, it's about me. So it's not about the choices. It's not about the action. It's about where you're playing from. Because I know to, to play in the unconscious agenda, to play that out, 
it's going to cost me far much more money than that tax. So much more. If I start giving power to my unconscious, man, it, it is going to take me for a ride. Hey, it is. It, it's going to it's going to impact every area of my life. Because because if I start giving it power, then it gets stronger. So you must learn to see your unconscious agenda and then and then accept that it's not real. And that you made it up. See that you made it up. That's the most interesting thing. You made it up. You made it up. And the you that made it up was a two-year-old child trying to understand uh, how to find their place in this world. Give me a true or a hand up if you agree with that. Is you made it up a very long time ago? Hmm? And by playing out your agenda, all, all you're doing is, is basically being childish. And I mean that in the literal sense of it. It's childish. It was childish for me to create another enemy that I needed to beat. Isn't it? That's a, that's a childish way of being. That's not powerful. That's not a creator. So, so you first must neutralize it. I don't know if it's Sarah or Harriet, but someone's got, I can hear myself. <laughs> uh, so so you, you must neutralize it. I'm not sure someone's in the next office. I can hear myself. Is it sorted? Yeah, I think it's sorted. Thanks, thanks. Good to hear that you're on. <laughs> um, and so creating the, the magnetic mind is about having uh, all levels of your mind and to agree and accept the end result and the action needed and, and to realize you can have it now. Okay, is to, is to realize uh, that you can, you can have it all now. And, and that's the key, is you are allowed to have it all now. You, you, there's, if you look at the first one, there's actually no such thing as perfect. There's no perfect way to be. It's made up. Isn't it? It's made up. There's no perfect way. It's all made up. A body image made up that used to be completely different. It's changed. It's all made up. There's no, there's no one way. There's no one way to be body. There's no one way to do your day. There's no one, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. There's no way to be more worthy of something. You don't become worthy of money or love. You just go and you go and create it. You can be a good person and have loads of success, and you can be a bad person and have loads of success. They're not correlated. And it's obvious. Otherwise, you know, all of our amazing saints and people that do really good things, they would all have heaps of money and things. You see, it's not like that. And then it's it's different. You can be good. You can look after people, and that's a great choice. And you can also have what you want. They're just simply not connected. No matter what book tells you how to be worthy of having this, or it's just not true. It's, it's just it's just silly. so that doesn't work. Uh, the next one is is you know trying to prove that you're good enough. There's there's no such thing. There's no such thing as as good enough. What is enough and, and trying to prove that your stuff is, is so amazing isn't actually the answer because you're giving all the power to someone else. There's no way to solve that, is there? There's, there's no way to, to solve um, being that you're finally enough. It, it, it's a never ending thing and all the power is given to those who judge you. And, uh, and so, so it's just not true. There's no way to be enough. There's no way to not be enough. It's just to be. Uh, you know, the, the person who's, who's choosing to try to be accepted and loved by others, uh, you know, in belief that they're not, I'm not, I don't belong. It, it's, this, it's actually, there's no way to belong more or less. You are a human, you belong, you're the DNA of your family, you belong. That is as much, you know, you, 
There's no way to get more or less. It just is. It just is. You know, understanding the world is impossible. It's impossible. Trying to understand the, the miracle of a, of a star or consciousness or what was before the Big Bang or what will happen after the big crunch, like it, it's impossible. It, it, it's to, to, the more you look, the more you find it's impossible. To, to, to find um, people that are, that if you always focus on authority and being allowed, it's just not true, it's made up. As a child, you were told you can do this, you can't do that, thank you authority. But, but, it, but as an adult, you, you know, there's just, there's, you're allowed to have whatever it is you wanna have. You're allowed to say, well, I mean, society, if you hurt others, society will come and say, you're not allowed to be part of our society anymore. So, so as long as you're not impacting other people's ability to have what they want, then you're allowed to as well. The, the person is always searching for positiveness. It's just not true. It, it's just not true. In the human experience, the only way to have positive is there's going to be negative. It's just not true. So you can let your agenda realize it's not true. There's no way to only have positive. It's just no way. It's positive is, is only there in contrast to, to negative. And negative is not a big deal. In fact, negative is very important. If you don't feel negative, uh, then, then uh, you don't really get the fullness of life. <laughs> it, you know, there, there isn't a way to dominate or control everyone. At some point, if you live in that world, you're going to be dominated and controlled yourself. There's just no way. At some point, you're not going to be the, the biggest dominator. There's someone else. There's something else. And uh, same with no conflict and peace. Unfortunately, we live in a co-creative co world where uh, people want different things. It's impossible. It's impossible to have. You see? And none of it stops you creating. And so what we must be able to do is knock off and not live down there. No matter how much your unconscious agenda sells yourself, because I promise you, your, your agenda, this, this, this part of you, it can sell you. Here, I'll tell you how it sells you. It says, you're going to save $600,000 just by going there. Plus, you'll be able to put on seminars. And there's all these people in the United States that would love to come to your seminar. And it's going to be cheaper to live. Also, the way that, this, the way that Australia is going, it's all closing in. And it's all getting getting authoritarian and it's going to be amazing and you'll get there and, and it's great because people in Europe could come see you and everyone wants to so you make more money you'll impact more people you'll have more that it will sell you on it you see that it's selling me on it but it's not my choice even as good as it might sound and that's what I really wanted to share with you guys as you're creating, as you're going for it, and as and as you're creating what it is that you love, there's going to be this agenda. And this is why you must have choices written out. It's why you must be clear on what you're going and to look at it and go, why am I fighting this? Why am I doing that? What do I really choose? Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.